Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I will talk about how you can create and use the public IP addresses in Azure. So here are the topics that I'll be covering in this video. I will start off with an overview of public IP addresses. I will then list all the Azure resources that uses public IP addresses. I will show you how to create a public IP address in Azure. And during the creation of public IP address, I will talk about some of the features of public IPs such as IP address assignment, public IP SKUs, public IP tier, and the routing preference of public IPs. I will also show you how you can assign an unassigned public IP resource to another resource such as virtual machine. Let's get started. We know that public networks like the internet communicate using public IP addresses and private networks like your Azure virtual networks or your on-premises networks use private IP addresses which are not routable on public networks. In this diagram, you can see you have a home network, corporate network and an Azure network, right? In this home network, you have a router the laptops and PCs are connected to the router using a private network. You can see they have a private IP addresses which are in the private IP range which is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. The router has a private IP which is 192.168.1.1 and a public IP which is 20.25.185.47 to communicate with the internet. The router here does the network address translation to provide internet or outbound connectivity to your devices in the home network. And it would work pretty much the same way in the corporate network or in an Azure network. It is just that in a corporate network, you'll have servers in different VLANs connected to one or more Ethernet switches and then a gateway or a firewall to provide internet or outbound connectivity and also secure the network from internet attacks. In an Azure network as well, you would pretty much see the same thing where you typically have a VNet with larger IP address space. You can see I have VNet1 with, which has an IP address space of 172.16.0.0/16 and that is divided into multiple IP subnets such as web subnet, app subnet, db subnet and things like that. These IP subnets will be connected to Azure Firewall or some sort of uh, network virtual appliances to provide routing and firewalling services. In all these different types of network, you will have internet facing devices such as routers or firewalls, which would have a public IP assigned from their ISP and they connect to each other to form a larger internet. So in Azure, public IP addresses enables you to communicate with Azure resources from the internet and also allow the Azure resources to communicate outbound with the internet. You can assign public IP addresses to some of the Azure resources such as virtual machines, load balancers, application gateways, Azure firewall and many other Azure resources. And to provide internet or outbound connectivity to Azure resources such as virtual machines, you always don't need to assign a public IP address to them as there are other better ways to provide the internet or outbound connectivity to your Azure resources. Also public IP addresses are not free and it is not a best practice to assign public IP address to your virtual machine from a security perspective. One of the better ways is that you deploy a NAT gateway and link it with the subnet of the virtual machines that requires internet or outbound connectivity. You can see here in the screenshot, NAT gateway uses public IP address to communicate with internet and can provide internet connectivity to the VMs of a subnet using network address translation services. Another example can be web servers that must be accessible from the internet in this case, you use a public load balancer assigned with the public IP address. You can see here in the screenshot on the right side. 
And just so you know, a public IP address in Azure is a resource and it has its own properties. Now let's look at a list of uh, Azure resources where you can associate a public IP address. So you have virtual machine network interfaces, virtual machine scale sets, load balancers of public type, virtual network gateways, express route, NAT gateways, application gateways, Azure Firewall, Bastion Host, and many more. All right, let's jump into the demo for creating public IP address. I've already logged into Azure portal. In the search box, I will type public IP addresses and select that. In the public IP addresses window, you can either click on create or click on create public IP address button down here. I'll click on create. In the create public IP address window, the first option is to select the IP version, IPv4, IPv6, or both. So public IP addresses can be created with either an IPv4 or IPv6 address or both. But if you select both, it will create one IPv4 public IP address and one IPv6 public IP address. But for this demo, I'm going to select IPv4. For the SKU, there are two SKUs to choose from basic and standard. If I select basic SKU, it allows me to choose both static and dynamic allocation methods for public IP addresses. And the idle timeout for a basic public IP of traffic type inbound originated flow can be adjusted from four to 30 minutes. And by default, it is four minutes. And the idle timeout for outbound originated flow is fixed for four minutes. So this is the timeout value which would define how long you want the TCP or HTTP connection kept open without having the clients to send the keep alive messages. Now, if I select standard SKU, notice I cannot select dynamic IP address assignment. The only option available for me is the static IP address assignment with standard SKU. The idle timeout values for standard public IP is same as the basic public IP for both inbound as well as outbound. Another thing that you should be aware of these two SKUs is that Basic public IPs are open by default, so it is recommended that you use network security groups to restrict inbound or outbound traffic. Whereas standard public IPs are secure by default and closed to inbound traffic when used as a front-end IP configuration on an Azure resource. This means you need to allow inbound traffic using network security group NSGs for standard public IPs. For this demo, I will select the basic SKU. Again, if you notice, the tier option gets disabled when I select basic SKU and it will be set to regional only. Let me select this back to standard SKU and select global for the tier. Now this would allow a public IP address to be used with cross regional load balancers. This would be super useful if you want to provide a global service. Selecting global for the tier will also not allow you to change the routing preference and it will be set to Microsoft network only. So what does routing preference do? Uh, routing preference determines how your traffic routes between Azure and the internet. Selecting Microsoft network sends the traffic via Microsoft global network, which are closest to the users. And selecting internet uses transit ISP network. The charges for egress data transfer may vary based on your routing selection. Just so you know, routing preference of a public IP cannot be changed once created. And you can select internet as the routing preference only if you change the tier from global to regional. I will again select basic SKU. IP address assignment can only be either static or dynamic. A dynamic public IP address is an assigned address that can change over the lifespan of the Azure resource. For example, if I keep dynamic as the IP address assignment, a dynamic public IP address is allocated when you create or start a VM. But that public IP address is released as soon as you stop or delete the VM. 
and in each Azure region, the dynamic public IP addresses are assigned from a unique pool of addresses. On the other hand, the static public IP address is an assigned address that will not change over the lifespan of the Azure resource. For example, when you start or stop the VM, the public IP will not change. So to ensure that the public IP address for the Azure resource remains the same, make sure you set the IP address assignment to static. And a static public IP address is released only when you delete the public IP resource or change the IP allocation method of the public IP to dynamic. Another thing to know about this queues, basic public IP does not support availability zone, whereas standard public IP supports availability zone scenarios. So if you select standard SKU, you can see the availability zone options and clicking on it, you can select no zone to make it non-zonal if you want to, or make it zone redundant by selecting zone redundant or making it zonal by selecting zone one, zone two, or zone three. I will change the SKU back to basic. Next, I'm going to specify a name for the public IP configuration. I will simply name this as PIP1. For the IP address assignment, I will keep dynamic selected. I will leave the default idle timeout. For the DNS name label, specify a DNS label for a public IP. This would actually create a mapping for your domain name to the public IP in the Azure Managed DNS. So for example, I will specify Live Music Tech as the DNS name label, and I will select East US as the Azure region. The fully qualified domain name, the FQDN, would be livemusictech.eastus.cloudapp.azure.com and it would resolve to the public IP address of the Azure resource. This domain name must be unique within its Azure region. Now, if you want a custom domain name for the public IP, you need to use either Azure DNS or an external DNS provider for your DNS record. And by the way, DNS label works for both IPv4 and IPv6 public IP addresses. I will just go with the Azure Managed DNS. I will select my subscription, which is pay as you go. I will select my resource group, resource group one. I will keep the location as East US. Now I'll click on create and it would go ahead and create the public IP address for me. I'll wait for the deployment to complete. All right, it is completed. Now back in the public IP addresses window, you can see my new public IP address is listed, PIP1. I can use this public IP address and assign it to a virtual machine, load balancer, or any of the Azure resources which can be associated with the public IP address. Let me show you this. I'll go ahead and try to create a new virtual machine. I'll click next here to go under networking tab. You can see the public IP option here and I can select my new public IP. Also, I really don't need to create the public IP before I can assign it to an Azure resource. I can create a new public IP while creating an Azure resource, for example, during the virtual machine creation. And you can see I have a create new button up here. So this is how you create public IP address for Azure resource. I hope you like this video. For more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.